Poppets. Right, those of you who don't know me through Instagram already and TikTok and all the rest of it, I've joined the world of YouTube. So thank you so much for finding this page, subscribing. I hope you're doing all the things you have to do on YouTube. So when I make a little video, phone and you can come and watch me so those of you who don't know me i'm todd glister an engineer for a bloody long time now started my own business back in 2008 um and yeah glister service has been there ever since then so i'm doing really well i'm loving it i love my job as you'll see i love installation practice but most of all i help as many people as i can so Hopefully you enjoy everything I show you. I do loads of things. Todd's top tips. I've been doing self builds this year with my little brother. We did that and I've just bought some land. That's all going to come on the channel. I'm going to try and film and get as much as I can across. We're also focusing <laughs> on getting the task done at a professional and timed manner. So bear with me. I like to jumble up my words. I'm uh, really, really grateful for you to subscribe in this page and enjoy guys. Let's roll them titles. Woo! Very good morning to everyone. We have a beautiful, beautiful day today. I'm starting this new job here at this old schoolhouse. It's now, it's now obviously a house. This is my first day here today. Um, oh, I'll show you what we're up to. <laughs> oh, would you look at that? What a wonderful customer. Cool. My tea down. Oh is up here in this loft space. We're gonna be installing a new storage combination boiler. So it's gonna go up here where these old tanks are. Now, had the customers kindly sorted me out a floor here because I said to him, really, I want a walkway from like the hatch over to here. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna sort of getting this bit of stud work in here, a bit of ply up and we're going to have a storage combi to so convert in this old gravity conventional system here um and i'm going to have i've got to work the flue out that's the chimney there so i'm not going to go that way i don't think i want to go that way because you'll see it from the driveway so i think that way depending if we can get a roofer up on the outside i'm sure we can so yeah gonna be doing that so that's my little job today i'll be doing this bathroom as well so i'm going to put that on this series but this is the this is well, a fairly new boiler, but obviously the old copper cylinder. So could be stripping this all back, get rid of all of that, create that space there. That's why the boiler's going up in the loft. All the pipe work seems to be running through. It goes through in here, in this box in here. I'm gonna take this all down today. That runs up into that loft space above. So we're gonna take that all down, sort all this out. I've got cables to throw in, pipes. And then the plan is that once this all comes out, I'm gonna rip this wall down, perhaps move the toilet over here, a bit further over. They want like a nice big shower area. Um, and they, I think, I'm not sure if they want a tray, if they want a wet room, we're still discussing it but we want to create it nice and easy and future-proof for when they're, in their words, elderly. So you get rid of this ginormous <laughs> corner bath. There was such a thing back in the day when it had big corner baths, but yeah, so that's the plan. There's lots to do in here. Also, I think I wasn't sure if they wanted to get rid of this and go up into the roof space, but again, that's a cash thing. If they want to do it, I'm up for it, if not, it does. So let's get cracking. Hey, I'm already knackered. <laughs> I've only loaded this stuff up into the loft a few times. <laughs> so this length of ply that I had, I've just cut that in half. Um, it's given me like 914.5 long. And then what I'm going to do is double them up on top of each other. And that should give me a nice bit of width there. Um, to do pipe work, a few spurs and all that jazz. So that's going to go up to there. Now what I've done is I've taken my laser line off this rafter because my first bit of timber is going to screw into that. That's going to come down plumb onto the edge of that. 
and then I'm just going to tie it in with this one and that one and then screw my ply back to that and we should have a lovely solid fixing to work on. These are my three um, studs that I've tied into the roof there. It's just nice and solid. That's it up. I'm going to put a couple of studs in across here. That's just going to support my bracket at the right height and then bang these ply on and get a bit of paint down. It'll look really nice. Right, and that's that base done. Nice and solid. <coughs> because this boiler is huge. So we want a nice solid base for it to hang on. I'm just giving this a little lick of paint. Something I started doing on Instagram a few years back and it sort of changed the game a little bit. It's just that little extra touch. It just, it literally, what, this this was a tenor in Wix, this paint. I normally mess around with the colours just to play about with it because it doesn't matter. It's up here in the loft. So no one's going to care, but I just, I like doing it for my pictures and stuff like that. It takes me about 10 minutes to paint something like this. I think it just looks a lot nicer when it's done. Um... I've gone for a bit of a royal blue this time <laughs> because it was in stock and it was in wigs. So, um, yeah, I'm going to crack on. Do you know what? That's what I was saying. Like, for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I will be real, it was about 15 minutes. And for a 10 a pot of paint, I know it's up in the loft, but it does just sort of make it look like you care a little bit. The joys of working by yourself. I could get this Valent 938 up into the loft on my own, on my shoulder. Here we go, wish me luck. One of my favourite things about this is that it comes in two parts. So just manoeuvring it is a lot easier. Something to think about if you've got it in an awkward space like I have. So yesterday we made this, didn't we? I've got them studs going across there. So you can sit these nice thick bolts. I've put a pilot hole in with a thicker screw and that just makes that easier. Bam, that's not going anywhere. Really good because we've got a storage unit and the combi boiler on top. So we've got a nice solid wall for that. Right, as you see, I've put my mats down here. That just protects the paintwork. Now this is the, I think it's 15 liters. They call it the Aqua store, if you haven't seen this before. And what it does, it just preheats 15 liters of um, hot water like the little one vented cylinders that you see under sinks and stuff about that much it, it enables a much higher flow rate for your heating uh, for your hot water system so as you can see like so we've got that thickness and then around the back there you can see my bolts come through my stud there's a couple more screws there but they're going into that stud as well so that's through so that gives you this bit here to hang the actual combi boiler on and then what you do is follow these instructions so it's very very easy to install you can see there that's why you want a good fix in look it's like a washing machine hanging on the wall and then i've got the joyous task of getting under here you can't even see it so i'm gonna do all these connections under here like this <laughs> it's gonna be fun but it look good so just a little top to top tip here, right? If you're doing a load of work on here, I'm not doing the flue until the roof is gonna get here because we've got a wrecked scaffolding up the outside. There's a, this is a listed building, got very old slate and everything. It's a very difficult part of the roof to get to. So I'm not gonna be using this for a while. So just in case I'm banging and there's any dirt or anything, just get something like that, polystyrene, and just bang it over the top of the flue, like so, and just leave that on there. And then that way you know it's going to stay completely clean inside. Right, so what I like about this, they just idiot proof it for you. So look, you've got one, two, three, four. And that is the order you do it in. So going to get this all made in under here now. And also, whilst I've got you, is any electricians or plumbers, back in the day, they never used to have... Oh, I can't get my finger. They never used to have this. They just had a load of these. So people still carried on going through that and it's not they want the cable brought through this what this is for is exactly this boiler so as you can see that's um the cables for the back store and you see that there so you just take that circlip out and that fits in there perfectly so you take that out and that's where that goes and then you plug this into the pcb even labels it up nice and easy for you so yeah right well, let's crack on
Right then, so I've got them pipes through there, yeah, as you can see. Now, there's nothing other than a gas nipple on this side. Um, and I've cut that, you can see there's quite a distance there off the wall. And that's simply because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my insulation and it's the armor flex. So if there's a bit more of a return there, it sort of just sits on the pipe a lot nicely. And obviously we have the, the advantage here of like doing all of the plumbing behind. So this side, when you're looking at it, it will just look clean. I'll have the black insulation going through, uh, black condense. That'll look all lovely. And it's just the gas nipple exposed there. And it also, one of the benefits is, is that if anyone's ever done any maintenance on these, there's like a, a PRV at the back there. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Let's, hit, mate, let's get around this side. You can see that PRV up the top there. So just having that little gap there behind the pipe work just gives you a bit more room to get tools in you know it's a little bit more working room so there's a few advantages to doing it like that now obviously that's all on the dangle angle i mean it's not going anywhere but i'm going to clip that the other side and that'll be absolutely solid all right first things first so get my little pack out vacuum i have one for dryer one for wet i'm just gonna get all this sawdust up clean it all up oh. Well, I don't like mess. Right then, installing my first Velo Isoboost 5. They're doing a 3 and a 5, depending on the property size. Um, looking at this, unboxing it. So we've got this, these little couple of fittings here. What I'm going to do is grease that up. I've pulled some plugs out of here. It's very clearly labelled in and out. Very easy. And all you do is you remove this tab here. And then once that's pushed in, you just... Pull the push these in it locks it in place um what's great about these is it allows as you see you can go anywhere you want you've got loads of options there all the way around you can do it anywhere you want so it's a very simple thing obviously it comes in off the tank goes in draws out high pressure nice and simple right a nice little tip with valence boiler protection kit guide um not with the kit guide just with the kit <laughs> um now, somewhere in one of these booklets, it says that if you've got a boiler where the heating load is higher than 27 kilowatts, then you can't fit a 22 mil um, filter. And that's simply because it doesn't allow the 22 mil filter, the flow rate going through it, through here. So through this is smaller. So if you fit a 22 mil one, you're restricting the flow rate. So that's why Valen ask for a 28 mil one. There you go, you see it better there. Because that's roughly, the internal diameter that is roughly of a 22 mil pipe. So you're getting that same flow rate running through. Now, obviously there's a 22 mil connection on the boiler. And a little tip here, because everyone moans about it, is if you just get one of these in here. So as you can see there, you've got the first part, the olive, and this bit here. And that means that my 22 mil pipe, that's a bit too long, that bit. But it just goes in like that. And then that way, you're keeping the warranty in check by fitting a 28 mil filter and you're not really losing out on any space or any more fittings and stuff like that. It's just the internal juice. It's a neat way of doing it. I hope that helps anyway. Oh, hi there, hi there. Sorry to interrupt. I know you're enjoying that. <laughs> Poor rascal. I just wanted to let you know that Metabo are the sponsors of this channel. And to celebrate, I'm doing a four-piece kit giveaway. We've got a combi drill. We've got an impact driver. We've got an angle grinder, an inspection light, some batteries, chargers, a little adapter for your combi drill, and all I need you to do is just like and subscribe. I know you've already done that already, you little legends. But comment below on what you want to see from me on this channel. Are you enjoying yourself? And I'll flick through them little comments and I'll choose a winner at random. Right, I'll let you get back to it. I know you're enjoying it. Leave it. Stop interrupting us, Todd. Crikey. Oh! Ads is here. Hi, Ads. Hi. 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 Um, so, Adam's here. We're going to be putting the two core that goes from the Nest receiver through this box in. I'm going to get it all under the floor and hardwire it in. I know they've become wireless, but I, I really, if I can hardwire anything, I will. Um, and Adam's going to try and get the um, the new 2.5 up to the fuse spare for me in the double socket. So he's working his magic there. 
Um, just got to take off this boxing and expose everything. We we're obviously trying to do as much as we can without interrupting the system, so they've got heat and hot water the entire time. So and I'm also going to be waiting for the roofer to show up today because um, he's going to come and help me get this flue through. It's a bit awkward. I don't know if you can see that. So he's going to have to walk up these old slates here. You see there, you have to get up them slates and then the flue is going up there because the boiler's up there somewhere. So we've got a bit of messing about to do there. So it's going to be fun. Yep, ready when you are. Right. Right, and guide that through, guide that in. There we go. Right, let's do this up. Lovely. Thanks, Dave. Right, Diamond, mate. Here we go. Oh, God, this is killer. So, here I am. I've pulled myself up through world's smallest loft hatch I have to put the camera like this you end up like having to get your like arms like that and then because i haven't got big enough steps i took sort of pull myself up like a dip uh, and pull myself through uh, but i'm up oh, lovely lovely cobwebs oh 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 <laughs> so that's the condenser that's dropped above the boiler so i'm just gonna be clipping all this so you can see that's brought through from upstairs. So I'm gonna clip that on there like so, so it's nice and solid. And then get a sort of elbow across and then get the right degree because I've pre-stuck a 45 right in that corner where that wasp's nest was. So that's going there and I've just tucked that up under the boiler. So when I come to rip the boiler off, I can just extend it and take it outside. We're getting all the main behind the scenes bit done. There's a little loft area though. <laughs> Cute. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, Jesus. Here he is. Good morning. So, um, I'm draining everything down today. This is the big swap over there. I've done as much as I can on this system. So that now I'm gonna just drain it down, rip it all out, and it's only just little bits of pipe work rather than leaving myself with like mammoth bits of pipe work whilst they get their water off and it just inconvenience my customer as much as possible. So this is the quickest and most efficient way of doing it. Still a massive day, but a lot easier than any other way. So, especially as I'm working on my own, just wanna get as much of the work done which i've done to drain this all out now start getting this off let's turn the power off start getting this off the wall right, let's get a hose on that drain cock right an old classic todd's top tip so because every moron likes soldering the drain cock on and then when it's really hot they they wind this in so it melts all the washer. As you can see, I've got that fully open and nothing's coming out. Now, what you can do is go up there, stab it and then put your hose on, or a safe way of doing it if you want. You've got a hose like this, pierce it up through there, find the middle. Hang on, left-handed, not the best. And then, give it a little. And you can hear the Hear the water flowing out of that now. Pull that up. That sort of seals itself up. You've got a nice flow now. Run through. Without making a mess everywhere. You used to be able to suck a golf ball through a garden hose, but these days, I can't be asked.
been ripping all this out, getting this all out, got this pipe work out, trying to expose this gas pipe. Because what I need to do is I need to get rid of this, ideally, this barrel going through the floor, right through up to its copper, and then run 28 in the same notching, but come up above the floor here, and then pick up my gas pipe that's in this box in, and then pick this up for the hob downstairs as well. So it's great fun. Um, but I've just sort of like taking this out, having a little sort of cap the hot off temporary for tonight, and I'm gonna sort all the heating out tomorrow. A big, big gas job to do now. Ooh. Right, so this is where I'm at, this gas pipe. So, moved all the off it, there was like a bed and office, moved that all out of the way. Customer moved all the cust like all the carpet out of the way, absolute dream boats. Um, what we've got to do now is I'm just trying to figure this out really because that's the existing gas supply and it's in barrel. I didn't know whether to notch in a new gas supply, but there's obstacles that I've got. I've got this here, I don't think it leaves much clearance above them pipes. I don't want to take too much of that joist out at all. So a sensible option would be to follow this barrel run with 28 mil because they're even these big beams here. I don't, I'd have to go up like that across. I mean, this is, has been put through. So I have to cut across that beam there because the size of it. Don't really want to be doing that. But if I can renew this, maybe today, try and untwist this, make something in, and then tee off here into this box in. I'm trying to keep this this here. I'd love to rip this off, but it's all been papered, like the cove in. So I'm doing my best just to keep that in here. And if I can get bring my tee across here up, I can then elbow across onto this bit of wood. I've got some clips up. And then run that up there. But then there is, I think, a mains pipe just there, which is really irritating. It's exactly where my gas pipe is. So I'm gonna have to solder in a bit of pipe, 250, slide that in there, and then clip that down. And then I've got a bit of soldering to do, very tight to the beam this side, up and across, but great fun. I'm trying to do this and keep them up and running. It's bloody tricky. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll do that. Here's some real life soldering for you. Lovely. I'm just getting this little length in here. There's a lot of soldering out of place here. And then... in there. Connect this up first. Ah, that's it. Lovely. So this is this one finished, a bit dustier than when I first left it. That's because <laughs> through the other side, ripped the ceiling off in the bathroom. We've raised the height of the ceiling in there and obviously all the ripping out, the dust come up here and settled a little bit, but it's in the loft, hey ho, it's fine. Now this is the Velo ISA Boost 3 or 5, that's how it works. So in here I've got a Valent 938. This is a storage combination boiler. As you can see, all insulated and stuff like that. I've taken off the two bits of insulation just to show you this important part you've got to remember when fitting this pump. So I kept the original tank that was up here to save my customer money. And this is the inlet coming in and that's the outlet. Now it's very important to remember that your inlet has to be bigger than your outlet. So I've got 35 mil off the tank going into this and 28 mil going out. Now the outlet, goes out the back 
around the back there. I'm not going to squeeze behind there. It was an absolute pig <laughs> to get behind there. I'll show you in another video. But that 28 mil goes off, goes to the bathrooms and obviously comes off in 22 straight, uh, sorry, 28, 22 straight through into this boiler. And then I've got 22 going back out again um downstairs so this boiler has been coping brilliantly with both bathrooms i've had both bathrooms outlets running and they've been 20 liters i think it sort of dip and it dips every now and then it goes from like 19 to 20 liters per minute on the hot water side of things uh with all outlets open and it just doesn't dip in pressure it worked out nice actually got the correct fall on that as you can see that went through and we just about just about got it and went through with a vertical flue in the end so it looked nice so yeah, well happy with this job. Go downstairs and show you this. And we can see how quiet this pump is. Um, it comes with anti-vibration uh, feet on there, but I've just also, I've just make it really quiet. I've sat it on a little bit of this as well, and that'll keep it really quiet. So honestly, you can't even hear this thing. Let me go downstairs. I'll show you the bathroom. Oh, it's nice, proud of that one. So in here. <laughs> show you that just yet what i've done here is what they call a cliffhanger remember who shot phil am i right <laughs> so tune in next episode i'll show you exactly everything i've done with this bathroom transforming it it's the best transformation ever i know you're gonna love it so tune in to the next episode and uh yeah and we'll show you exactly how this wilo pump works it's so so quiet and my customer just absolutely loves the bathroom it's the biggest transformation in a bathroom i've ever done so stay tuned subscribe and i'll see you soon poppets Mwah!